Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video we're going to be working through a problem that involves an ideal transformer, okay? I encourage you to maybe take a minute right now to copy down the problem that we have here. Uh, as you see, basic kind of standard setup for an ideal transformer type of um, circuit that we might have, a couple of other uh, impedances that we will have to deal with, resistor, capacitor, another inductor, and then my voltage source here. Note that the voltage is given to me in, my, in the RMS value. Um, and then, uh, so take a quick minute, then we'll kind of work through if we wanted to be able to get to a solution for finding what these currents I1 and I2 are here. Also make note that each of these currents and voltages are all the phasor values. Okay, that's why I have the bar over them. That's how I indicate uh, the phasor quantity versus just a standard kind of DC quantity. Um, and again, the uh, voltage given to me here as follows. So I'll give you a minute to do that and then we'll get started. Okay, so in any of these ideal transformer type of problems, the main thing to remember is what do we know specifically about the ideal transformer? Well, um, the basic I things that we kind of know about them is to say that uh, basically they're, they're ideal in the sense that they have no loss uh, or anything associated with them. So there's a process for deriving then a couple of really key relationships that evaluate the voltage on either side of the uh, ideal transformer as well as the currents that are flowing through on either side. We can relate those through the so-called turns ratio, which is given here above the two bars. Again, the two bars are what's specifically indicating that it's an ideal transformer case. Um, so in the relationship we know between the voltage V1 and V2, uh, that's given as V1 over N1, where N1 is the turns, the number of turns on the primary side, uh, is equal to V2 over N2, where again N2 would indicate the number of turns on the secondary side of the transformer. Now this is the form of the equation we know, but then we need to pay attention always to the specific uh, whether or not this should be positive or negative by looking at the dot convention. Uh, so again here looking at the dots that are given to us in the problem. And because the voltages of V1 and V2 are defined for us, we can simply apply the dot convention that we know uh, given what we have. So in this case, for this relationship that we're looking at, it tells us that if the voltages V1 and V2 are both positive or both negative at the dots of either of those coils, then this should be a positive relationship. However, what we see here is the opposite case where I have V1 is positive at the dotted terminal, but V2 is negative at the dotted terminal. So that tells me that this relationship should in, in fact include a negative sign. Okay. So from this, then plugging in our uh, ratio of one to four turns, this would tell me that V1 is equal to negative one over four times V2. Now it should of course be consistent here to say that each of these are phasor values of the voltage, all right? Now the second relationship is, is telling us something about the currents, I1 and I2, and how they are related uh, in this ideal transformer. So that relationship looks like uh, I1 times N1 equals I2 times N2. Now again here for the dot convention in this equation, what we do is look at the flow of the currents, which again in this problem the currents are given to us already. Um, we see here that if, or the, the dot convention tells us that if both currents are flowing into or out of the dotted terminals on either side, then this should have a negative sign in the equation. But again, we're in the opposite case, where here we have I1 flowing into the dot on the primary side, but I2 is flowing out of the dot on the secondary side. So therefore, this should in fact be a positive relationship. And so this then tells us how to relate I1 is going to be equal to four times I2, okay, as such. So again, these two relationships are specific to the case when we have the ideal transformer as indicated by having the two bars here that uh, just helps simplify a lot of transformer uh, types of problems because this uh, really gets us to a, a much more quicker of a, a relationship that we can work with. Now here still I have two equations, but I still have four unknowns, V1, V2, and I1 and I2. So we need more equations to get to some solution. Specifically, let's say if we want to find I1 and I2 here specifically. So for finding more equations, we could basically just think about applying a mesh current type of approach around each uh, side of the transformer. Sorry, here I will go in the same direction as the current I2. So if I look around the mesh, um, mesh one here, 
I would basically again just be adding up all the impedances around, or all, I'm sorry, all the voltage drops around that loop here specifically. So I'd have work out to be, let's see, two, the resistor two times the current I1 plus the voltage drop V1. So here I'm just saying I've I don't know what the voltage is across the primary side of this transformer, but I have indicated it as V1, so I can just plug that into my equation here. The voltage drop then across this inductor would be J3 times the current I1, and then here minus, or I could just say this is all equal then to the voltage from this voltage source, which is given as 30 minus J20. Uh, volts. Now note here again, as I think I mentioned before, the voltage here is given to, an, given to us in our RMS quantity. So let me just to kind of help us see what we're looking at here, the different equations that we have to work with. So this is first equation, second equation, third equation, and then my fourth equation can be working around the loop on the secondary side. So here I should have 8 through my resistor times I2 and then I've, through my capacitor, so it will look like minus J48 times I2. And then again, coming down across my voltage V2, that's a voltage drop as indicated, so plus V2 equals zero, okay? So now with these one, two, three, four different equations, I can solve for all four unknowns, in fact, and um, I, in this, for this video, I won't go through the whole process of uh, doing through the math, but I encourage you to work through that on your own. It's very important to kind of get used to, again, working with these complex numbers and how to do uh, math uh, operations dealing with complex numbers. Ultimately, what we get, should get to, or what you hopefully will get to in the end, is a value of I1 equal to 12 minus J8 amperes, and I2 equal to three minus J two amperes, okay? And that's would tell us something about the currents. Of course, in the same process, you're probably also finding what the voltages V1 and V2 are. And from uh, having all those values, that basically tells us everything we need to know uh, in this circuit. We could use that to evaluate other maybe power quantities or anything else that we were interested in finding. So that'll kind of wrap up what I wanted to do for this video. Hope to see you on the next one.